ஸ்ருதிஸ்மருதிபுராணம் கருணாலயம் நமாமிர்பகவத்பாதம் லோக்கம் சுகமல்பம் பிரம்மனிஷ்டம் ஜெனரலி அவர் லைஃப் கோஸ் இன் தி ராங் டைரக்ஷன் ஆஃப் வர்ல்டினஸ் ஓன்லி பிகாஸ் ஆஃப் தி ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் விவேகா த டிஸ்டிங்ஷன் பிட்வீன் பிளஷர் and inner happiness the word sukham is used in both cases and quite often the inner happiness is called ananda and the outer pleasure this the sense pleasure it is all pleasure is sense pleasure even when you become happy or become pleased when you remember something Suppose yesterday night dinner you remember and become pleased. That is, uh, there is no sense involved in it. It is the memory. But memory of what? Memory of sense pressure only. So all pressure is uh, uh, through senses. Whereas uh, the inner happiness, it doesn't have the involvement of the sense organs and the mind. it is of a different dimension not the sense organ dimension not the psychological dimension there is a, a deeper dimension in you now and here and so that inner happiness comes from that dimension so that is what is called ananda sometimes called sukham you should not ever contest about the words words are used by different people different words are used and therefore not a particular word is sacred uh, there is no such thing words are words you have to use them in the appropriate way anyway so shankara says nirunam to human beings and the human beings are like that most of the human beings are uh, like that vishayat grahi naam grahi means uh, pakadne wala so people uh, grabbing gra- graha grab english and sanskrit really they are very close to each other even in sanskrit uh, ha becomes ba even in sanskrit like a grunhati grubhnati they are very close ha and bha imam grubhnan kashana amrutasya anyway agrubhnan same as agrandhan han bha that is how grab came from graha so grabbing the word grabbing it it gets the spirit of the word vishay grahi perfectly grabbing not taking taking is one thing grabbing is another thing people they do not take take means you just take what you need there is no greed involved in that as a grabbing is always associated with greed a grab like that grab what vishaya they are grabbing of grabbing the vishayas the vishayas are shabda sparsha roopa rasa gandha they are the vishayas you should clearly see everything so it is not difficult but uh, um but you have to look at them like that very organized thought thought when it is organized uh, you can uh, modify it appropriately or you can appreciate it well so vishaya means objects uh, so that is that is the meaning vishaya is the objects so we try to grab the objects of the world try to grab always so uh uh you see always looking for grabbing something at the other always 
So, for example, uh, we join a job and start making money. What will you do with that money? Uh, food expenditure is not much. Food is only 10 percent of the economy. Not even 10 percent. In advanced, in, so in uh, Western and advanced societies, food is less than 10 percent, 5 percent. In uh, developing societies, developing country, developing country means poor country, underdeveloped country, chapta. They don't want to, they don't like to say uh, undeveloped. That doesn't uh, sound well. Developing, that sounds better. That's why we say India is a developing country. That, that keeps it quite nice. <laughs> so, in such countries, Asiatic societies and other poor countries, so a lot of income goes for food. For example, how a poor man defined, you know, in India poverty is defined as the income of the person goes, most of it goes for food. That is how a poor man is defined. He is called poor. Like a rickshaw puller, his income is barely enough for his needs of his food, his and his family. That's why he is poor. Whereas who are rich, very little of their income, something like one percent or maybe five percent, goes for food. Rest of it all is Vishayat Grahinam, grabbing the sense pleasures the objects of sense pressure. This is how the human beings are. That's why when they say ambition, competition, etc., so under, suppose we support it. Yeah, good, ambition is good, competition is good, means what? What will you do? You make uh, more money. And what will you do with that? Vishayat Grahina. That's why I always maintain Ambition is no good. Competition is no good. Anyway, so uh, they say progress. What is progress? Vishayak Grahi. That is the progress. And uh, so manufacture bhogas, the, the, the sense objects in large quantities, and then uh, uh, train people to consume, convert them to consumers, and then push them consume more, consume more, take a bag and go to market and purchase. That is good for economy, you know. This is the model. And all descriptions of progress are based on this model, which is a very undesirable model. We just don't want that model. Anyway, so people are like that, Vishayak Grahina, they will be grabbing Shabda. Shabda means, you know, Shabda operates in two ways in our lives. One, we always want to speak something or the other with the people that we are attached to. That is Shabda. How it, uh, how it uh, binds us, like uh, you are always uh, waiting for a phone call from the person to whom you are attached, uh, the person of attachment, you know. So the person's phone call, it is not coming, you get annoyed, disturbed. And when it comes, you, you become excited. That is attachment. So you want to speak, and while speaking you want to hear. And uh, that is Shabda. So we are all the time seeking Shabda, and then music. Music. You see, music, I do not mean devotional music. Music for the sake of entertainment. If uh, for some reason devotional is music is used for entertainment, then that also put into it. That becomes uh, vishaya. If devotional music is meant exclusively for devotion, like in the case of Tyagaraja, then uh, that is not vishaya. That takes you, that's why in music there is a thing called laya. It helps you to resolve in your being. It, it, it takes you into that state of being, which is meditation. And that is laya. And 
and then uh, there is a, that uh, to reduce the burden of the mind, uh, this sharanagati helps. The mind intervenes, you know, mind interferes. You want to get centered in your pure being, the mind interferes, it disturbs. And because it is impure, it is very agitated. And so, how to make it pure? Sharanagati. So, sarandattu Ishvara. How uh, contemplate upon Ishvara. That makes the mind calm and quiet. And then you can really get established in your pure being. This is how the music helps. Devotional music. So, Sharanagati. So, Rama, I am surrendering to you. You are the protector. You do Sharanagati. So that feeling of devotion, that sense of Sharanagati, it comes to you easy, the music helps. That is why it is called devotional music. But suppose you do not have any Sharanagati in mind, you, you only have Ragam, Tanam, Pallavi all the time. This Raga, that Raga, this Raga is superior to that Raga, I like this Raga, I do not like that Raga much, means what? The entire devotional music is converted into a Vishaya. So that mistake happens. Human mind is like that. Maya. You see, Maya takes over all the time. Like Sri Ramakrishna's example, you remove that weed that covers the water. Underneath there is nice, beautiful, very transparent water. Don't worry about the bacteria and all that. That is not the example, okay? Only this much is the example. Underneath you have wonderful water, very transparent. All the way down to the bottom you can see it is transparent. But covered by a moss, you know, moss or a weed. And so you put your hand like this and push it aside so you can see water. But you look up and remove the hand and then look down, there is no water. It is again covered. That is the Maya. Maya is like that in the mind. Therefore you say devotion, O Rama, who else will protect me? You alone have to protect me. Then mind says Mohan Raga. So Kalyana Raga is over, you have to go to Mohan Raga. So all the devotion is left behind. And then Mohan Raga or Samadha Raga or Tabala or Murdangam. So like that, uh, percussion instrument, percussion or concussion, whatever <laughs> instrument. So like that it goes into samsara. It becomes a vishaya. Samsara means it becomes a vishaya. And now there is ambition in that. There is competition in that. In devotional music there is ambition and poor Tyagaraja would get a fit if he sees the ambition and competition that uh, pervades uh, the devotional music. He, he never imagined that it can be used as an instrument of ambition and competition. Ambition. Musician. He has to travel worldwide. And then there are awards waiting. And so I have to grab those awards. So, so in India, to get the music award, then you need to know a few people. You have to know them. And then they should know you. Otherwise, if you, even if Tyagaraja is sitting somewhere, they won't give that award to Tyagaraja. <laughs> if Tyagaraja were to come back, they won't give the award to Tyagaraja because they don't care for him like that. Therefore, ambition, competition, that is not devotional music, that is Vishaya only. Like that, even Shabda is the Vishaya in two ways. Then Rupa is the Vishaya, Rupa. Always, I, I love this person. This person is beautiful. This person is not so beautiful. Like that, rupa. Attached to rupa. That is a, one kind of a vishaya. Then another vishaya, so people get attached to the, to the shape. They forget that shape is not a, a fixed thing. Shape is what body. It is not a fixed thing. It is like a wave, like a, there is water and then there is water, there is a wave in the water, a wave or a bubble. So it is a movement. So it is a wave. A wave is what? It's a movement. And the movement, it looks very beautiful. The movement called wave looks beautiful. 
and the sun reflecting in the wave, even more beautiful. So wonderful wave, this, that, all kinds of descriptions you give. But uh, being a wave, which is a movement, it continues, the movement continues. And therefore, the wave, the shape which was there originally, it is gone. Now the wave is gone. The body is like that. But suppose you are attached to a particular body. People are attached to the body, the shape. They are attached to the shape. And so, when uh, the life leaves the body, the shape is lying there, but you cannot keep that shape. It is already disintegrating. The shape, it has to be uh, cremated. In India, they cremate. They don't bury, they cremate. Because in, in burying the body, there is an attachment to the shape. You can see that, you know. Can't you see the distinction between the two? In burying, there is an attachment to the shape. That's why you need a casket. And the casket should be studded with some silver or gold. Now, now it begins. The whole story begins. And the body is kept inside the casket. And the lid is closed. Because the lid you want to close. Because you have a shape in your mind, fixed in your mind. And you believe that that shape is inside the casket. You see after a day the shape is gone. But still you want to believe the shape is sitting there lying there, and then put this casket in a tomb, and then some art around that tomb, this and that. This was there in ancient times, it is there in modern times. That is attachment to the body. Our rishis, they saw this problem. They said, cremate the body, ashes, and then he gets attached to the ashes, because the ashes, they are from the shape. Therefore, they said, that you merge it in a river. Put it in the river. Don't keep it at home. Put it in the river. When you put it in the river, they are now dispersed all over the earth. Because the river, water flowing everywhere, they are dispersed all over the earth. You, you do not have any location for it. Because if you have a location, then there is a, a shape corresponding to the shape, and so the attachment to the shape takes over. There is a big discussion about it in Chandogya Upanishad. If you want to <laughs> hear more about it, so go to Ashtamadhyaya of Chandogya Upanishad, 8th chapter. There, there is a discussion. This attachment to shape is called Asuro Upanishad. It is also an Upanishad, and more Upanishad, and the Upanishad of Asuras, not Devatas. Asuras Upanishad it is, attachment to the shape. People are Asuras, they have attachment to the shape. That is Vishaya Grahina, Nurana, and then Ropa Rasak Gandha, Shabda, Rasa, Shabda, Sparsha, Sparsha. Sparsha, you know what is Sparsha? Sparsha means the sofas, mattresses, pillows, dresses, and so uh, dress, you know, uh, the softness of the dress, all that is Sparsha. You see, when Rama was asked to go to the forest, he was wearing the silken clothes befitting a prince, but he was, a, he was asked to change into uh, Valkala, means uh, the, the rough, uh, coarse clothes made of jute, jute fiber. That is the Valkala. Jute fiber means, uh, you know sometimes you see the people wearing a jute fiber cloth around the jute bag, which is used for uh, uh, the gunny bag. Gunny bag, the jute bag, so which is used to for storing uh, uh, grains, etc. So the jute bag, then you cut it open and make it a rectangular thing. Like that it opens, like this uh, it opens. And, uh, and you wear it. That is called valkala. 
And Rama, he changed into that dress and went to the forest and took along with him a few jute bags, I suppose. And so in the forest he was wearing this valkala, very coarse cloth, clothing. So, the, the, whereas uh, our seeking uh, fine clothing, so like, uh, for example, uh, the dhoti is a, uh, within the dhoti that the sadhus wear, some sadhus old fashioned, sadhus in Prishikesh, etc., they wear uh, 80 number dhoti, 80, 80. Whereas we sadhus more sophisticated, international, and all that, so we wear 120 number dhoti. Our dhoti is 120. Whereas their dhoti is 80. That means their dhoti is very coarse, whereas our dhoti is very soft. It is all kata, but very soft. The cost goes up. And we go for the higher cost, nali higher cost. That is what we wear. Means we are already seeking the sparsha. That is the sparsha. So, um, so this way, I saw pillows, mattresses, and then uh, sofas, they are all meant for sparsha. That's why we get a lower back pain, spondylitis, all those things will come. Sometimes if you do yoga, like, uh, this kind of a uh, uh, salt, it is not hard the surface is used. Not like metal or cement, eh? but hard, but not hurting the body. So this kind of surface you use for yoga. You don't use a mattress for yoga. Because you have to give up the sparsha and go for the rough sparsha. Then only, that unless you give up the vishaya, you, you cannot grow. Even in physical health, you cannot grow unless you give up the vishaya. The more vishaya you take, grahi, the more sick the person becomes, even with physical body. Therefore, that is sparsha. Shabda sparsha, rupa, rasa, tastes. My God. So, we have a, a variety of tastes. In fact, an entire value system. It is not like uh, I need this taste, I like that taste. It's not that simple. Nothing wrong with it. A little uh, taste, having uh, some love for some little taste is fine. But you create an entire value system around uh, rich, tasty, delicious food. While making the home, you plan the kitchen very carefully so that you will have the most modern kitchen which can serve the most delicious sought after food to you at all times of the day. Like that. Twenty-four hours of the day the kitchen can do. You. you see, in the old-fashioned uh, Indian way, they used to have wooden stove, and the stove, uh, which, which is filed with wood chips, wood pieces. And so, if that is the establishment you have, you cannot make a dosha any time you want. So, the, the, so if you ask at three o'clock, if I go and ask mother, oh mother, I want a dosha. She says, what are you talking? What nonsense are you talking? Now we don't fire the, the stove. This is not the time to fire the stove. Go and come back at seven. I will give you dosha. She will put the fire at six thirty, and then she makes a little dosha. No harm. Not whenever you like. <laughs> so, there is a limitation there. But now in modern times there is no limitation. It is available twenty-four hours a day. And that kind of a value system is created. And now, because of overeating, we end up in all kinds of troubles. All kinds of troubles. An entire nation like United States or Britain or whatever, an entire nation has this obesity and overweight as an important issue, public health issue, that engages the administration, the economists and the social scientists and the healthcare officials all of them are concerned and worried. They don't know how to handle the situation because people just overeat and become overweight and then obese. Even in India it is like that. 
Anyway, this is a story which I told all the time. So you have to bear with me. That's why I see this in India. In America and Russia, Canada, etc., it is already a developed country. India is a developing country. So you can see the developing uh, development. You can see how it is happening. Suddenly you have uh, a locality, what we call a basti, a locality. Uh, so in this locality, suddenly you find uh, um, new constructions and uh, what are these new businesses? Hotels and hospitals. These are the two new businesses. New Year and New Year hotels where very high, uh, high end uh, food is available. Costlier and uh, more delicious food is available. New Year and New Year hotels. And then New Year and New Year hospitals where uh, uh, care is available and advertised. Care is a health care is advertised. Some of the advertisements they are very very peculiar advertisements. So, do you have uh, um, do you have uh, uh, this problem that problem? If you come into our hospital, it is it doesn't look like a hospital. It looks like home hospital. And uh, we will give you the feeling of home in the hospital. So like that. So like that some more is there. Very sickening advertisements um, which, uh, which speak of a very wrong value system. So this is a taste. Sparsha, rasa and gandha. Gandha means, uh, I don't know much about this gandha. Only thing is I see where, whenever you go into an airport, you see only Gandha there, no, nothing worthwhile, only Gandha. Suppose you want a cup of coffee, some decent uh, place you don't find, some useless coffee they sell. Um, whereas uh, Gandha, Gandha is everywhere. Gandha means this uh, fragrance. In the airport, I, I don't know why so much fragrance in the airport. Nowhere else you find like that. You enter into the airport, so uh, the French perfumes, uh, big big shops. Who will purchase? I don't know. Very amazing. There was making money. So uh, very you don't find uh, these shops anywhere else. Only in the airport. And very costly. And uh, very funny looking uh, shapes of those bottles and all that. <laughs> So all kinds of perfumes, a huge industry, perfume industry, all for the sake of Gandha. People have, a, they don't pay attention to some of the health issues even. For example, in the car, they put uh, Gandha there, in India. Here I suppose it is less. It is here also, you put a Gandha there. So it has a, such a structure that the, the volatile perfume will be coming out all the time. It will be sitting there, you don't see anything. Just it sits there, but inside the car you have perfume all the time. But you should know that it is not good for the bronchial system. All these perfumes, uh, these are organic compounds, uh, some esters and other things, some volatile molecules. Uh, occasionally a little of it is okay. But constantly bombarding the, the shvasa, the, the breathing system, with these perfumes, so the body, the chest needs oxygen. It doesn't want perfumes. It is looking for oxygen. Perfume is here. Here. This is the problem, you know. The tummy wants nutrition. It wants uh, some nice vegetables, salads, and uh, some little carbohydrate and uh, some other nutrients. That is what the tummy wants. What the tummy, within this, uh, here itself there is so much conflict. There is a conflict between what the tummy wants and what the tongue wants. Big conflict. Like the dosha, roast, extra roast dosha, that is what they say. Extra roast dosha means it is poison. Because all the oil is overheated and it is breaking into peroxides and the carbohydrate 
that uh, carbohydrate uh, syrup, it is uh, extra roast means it is carbonated. It becomes carbon. The brown color is our carbon. And so, uh, carbonated, uh, and we eat it with chutney and all that, so it tastes wonderful. Up to, up to here, wonderful. And below here, poison. Within here, the conflict. Then Gandha, up to here, oh, what a wonderful thing. But then it goes a little below into the chest and lungs, poison. These chemicals, they destroy the lung surface. The lung surface is the most precious thing in this body because it has to absorb oxygen. Under, it has to give up carbon dioxide. The surface, all this happens on the surface membrane of the lung, within the surface. And the surface must remain very fresh, ever fresh. That is the secret of pranayama. Why pranayama will cure all the diseases? Because when you do pranayama, you will never get anything called a stroke. Stroke never happens for a guy who will do pranayama. Whereas those who do not do pranayama and are, who are using lots of perfume, their oxygen intake is a badly compromised. Now the blood is not getting good amount of oxygen. The brain doesn't get good amount of oxygen. So now the brain is becomes vulnerable, stroke, this, that. So pranayama keeps the lungs and the brain fresh. That's why this uh, pranayama in the beginning what they do call kapala bhati. Kapala bhati means this is the kapala. Bhati means shining. Kapala shining. How kapala shines? When you do, <laughs> like that when you do, that, pra, that kapala bhati, it is, a, it is wonderful I tell you. Nothing like kapala bhati. It, uh, it keeps your stomach muscles supple. Some, of, some people will not be able to move their thoughts. He doesn't move. Move it. He doesn't move. He is fixed in a sota. It is like a cement wall. They don't move. That's all. They just can't move this muscle. Move it. He doesn't move. He doesn't move. So, whereas in Kapala Bhati, the stomach muscles, they move so well, the entire muscle, muscular system becomes massaged wonderfully. Inner organs get massaged. The outer massage, we want to help, inner organs have to be massaged. Suppose you go to a, a massier, the massaging persons, they, they will not be able to massage the inner organs, you know. They will do only this folder here, here they will do. And give some nice sense of relaxation. And therefore, and take a lot of money. That is what they do. Whereas if you do Kapalabhati, you can save all that money and then all the inner organs are wonderfully massaged. The stomach muscles. In fact, you should do Kapalabhati on a daily basis so that the stomach muscles remain supple. They do not become brittle or thick. They remain supple. And then the brain gets oxygenated marvelously. It gets wonderful oxygen when you do kapala bhati. And therefore, the brain, the brain cells, they love it, I tell you. Because they are getting oxygen, plentiful of oxygen. And that is called kapala bhati. So, uh, what I was saying, you need these things. You need oxygen. You need fresh air. You don't need perfume. Perfume you don't need. In fact, when you go for a walk in the woods, there is perfume in the woods. That is the subtle perfume. And you will, uh, you will know it only when you don't use the synthetic perfumes. Then only you can uh, know the natural perfume of the nature. The nature's perfume, you will know. But the nose should be extremely sensitive. That will be, that sensitivity will be lost. If you bombard the nose, the oleo, fat, oleo receptors, it will perfumes.
پیسے ہو سکنا بھی ہو سکتا سو بیت نکار ان بیڈ روم اگر بتی اس اگر بتی از انادر نیوز یو ڈونٹ نو واٹ کائنڈ آف تھنگس دے پٹ ان اگر بتی اف یو گو اینڈ فائنڈ آؤٹ دے ان انڈیا نو بڑی ول ٹیل یو واٹ ہی میکس نو کنٹینٹ فائنل پروڈکٹ از ڈیلیورڈ یو ٹیک اٹ آر لیو اٹ ایس آر واٹ آر دی واٹ آر دی کنٹینٹس آف دی اگر بتی ڈیڈ یو ایور انویسٹیگیٹ ان ٹو اٹ So, Agaru, nobody will, Agaru is very costly. But what do you think, Agaru? Agaru, they won't put. They put sawdust. Under the fine sawdust. Under uchi, uchi wood. Some silly wood sawdust they bring, wherever it is available, they bring it and use it. So, you are, uh, you are burning sawdust in the home. And all that carbon is going into the system. And then uh, uh, they put a perfume, synthetic perfume. And so that becomes volatile, volatilized. And uh, so the perfume molecule is there. And because of the fire involved, even the perfume molecule disintegrates. And so those pieces, the, the pyrolysis products of disintegration, they are all there in the atmosphere. We inhale it and exhale it. It is not good for health. You have to have agarbatti, dhupam, to Ishvara. The old-fashioned dhupam, if you do, it is okay. Otherwise, uh, I have a method. I take this agarbatti, whatever agarbatti it is. Uh, so, just then I light it. I don't light it at the beginning. Lamp is there. And then put this agarbatti to the lamp. And it glows. And then a little smoke will come, which is supposed to be fragrant. And do like that, dhupama grapa yami, and then put it out. The water, you dip in the water, it will be off. And then again, keep it there. Like that, one agarbatti is enough for 120 days of puja. One agarbatti. You don't need a second one. And when the agarbatti becomes almost gone, you can get one more piece. That is a dhupam, vidhi. So over. You should be like that. You should not use all these gandha. There is only natural gandha. That is gandha. Vishaya grahi. Therefore people grab all these vishayas. Vishaya grahi naam. Bahu runam. For such people, bahu klesha. What an advice it is. Lot of trouble. All trouble. Bahu klesha. All trouble. Go for shabda, all trouble. Grab sparsha, all trouble. Rasa, gandha, all trouble and trouble and trouble. Now what about some pressure that we get? Alpam, sukham alpam. It is nothing, very little. Very bad body gain. Sukham alpam, bahu klesha. The worldly people, They do not know the truth. Sukham alpam, they are like the fish. Sri Ramakrishna's illustration. So they have a, a fish net which is a bam, made of bamboos. It is called bamboo fish net. So all bamboos will be there. So what this uh, fisherman will do, he will fix uh, these bamboos. They are sharp at the bottom. So like this he will fix across the flow of the river. In the, in the river in Calcutta, you know, fix the net and he will go home. These bamboos which are fixed in the, into the bed of the river, they hold a net. That's why it is a bamboo fish net. And all these fish, uh, upstream fish, uh, they are uh, swimming very majestically and uh, very happily they are swimming. And uh, the flow of water is going and they go along with the flow, they are swimming happily. And then they don't know that they, are, that they are going into the net. They don't know. So they they go into the net, playing, happily swimming. Very luxuriously they go into the net and now they are caught in the net for good. They cannot come out of it. Over. This is Sri Ramakrishna's example. So similarly, 
the worldly people, they are very sophisticated, very well dressed, all are very civilized, and are very wearing all kinds of costly costumes and all that, very sophisticated. Even talking is very modern way, very civilized way they talk with each other, and their hairstyles are very high class, dresses are very high class, and they eat very cautiously, as though cautiously eating, in a very, they, they practice a lot of etiquette, and all that. So very sophisticated. And they are all going smoothly and they swimming like those fish, and they get caught in the net for good. Hogaya come, they cannot come out of that bondage for this life. They die in that net. Really, I am not exaggerating. That is the truth. So, sukham alpam bahu klesha vishayat grahinam runam. You see, if a, if a person thinks that his happiness is due to external causes. So I have a wife, I have children, I have my relatives all around me, and I have a good job, or I have a lot of money in the account. Therefore, because of these external causes, I am happy. Or by possessions. So I have a home, I have a, this equipment, that equipment, I have a pad, I have a pad, whatever. So these possessions, because of them, I am happy. This is what people think. If that is the truth, so it is reasonable to conclude that as the possessions increase, the happiness must increase. That is reasonable to conclude that way. And also, when the possessions decrease in, in proportion, the happiness also should decrease. That is what we have to expect reasonably. If that is the case, then when the positions are altogether gone, then he should have zero happiness. Right? That is what we expect. But what is the real experience of the human being? Does it conform to this view? Namely, the happiness depends upon possessions. Does it, our experience, does it conform to that view? No. You know why? In deep sleep, the person is devoid of all his possessions. There are no possessions in deep sleep, including his own body. Even that he doesn't possess. He doesn't possess any possessions. All possessions are given up, including his own body. Now, in sleep, he should be extremely unhappy and zero happiness, but in sleep, he is quite happy. So, in fact, everybody wants, their desire is to sleep. They want, suppose, uh, you see, the, this is the human experience which should be consciously appreciated. Uh, this man, he is with his beloved. They are in picnic and enjoying a nice five-course five, five course dinner in a star hotel and uh, dancing, and uh, eating, drinking, dancing. And then, uh, uh, so he says to her, I love you. Without you there is no life. You are the, you are the only, the balm of my eyes. I love you. And she says the same thing. And so he gives her costly uh, um, jewels and costumes. So she showers her love upon him. And so then uh, he says, uh, dear, I, I, it is time for me to sleep. So my question is, why should you want to sleep? Don't sleep. You have, you eat some more food and drink some more and dance some more and uh, enjoy the company of your beloved. Why you want to sleep? No, no, it is twelve o'clock. Okay, you, you don't sleep at all. Why should you sleep? Because these are all positions that make you happy. Why do you want to sleep? So, the, the meaning is very clear. So the experience of sleep, under the way we go to sleep, under the, the joy, the, the enthusiasm that we have for getting a nice sleep, 
So what does it mean? In fact, all the possessions, all the external causes of pleasure are swept aside as if they do not mean anything to you and you go to bed. In fact, it is as if you are very anxious to get rid of all these things. At the time of going to bed, suppose you offer him thousand dollars, he will say, shut up, see you tomorrow, go. He doesn't want any wealth, he doesn't want any possessions, he doesn't want any pleasures, he just wants to go to sleep. So, what is the meaning of that experience? So the the meaning of that experience is the happiness is inherent in the human being. It is not due to external causes. And uh, so what you have to do is uh, you have to realize your true self in order to experience unalloyed happiness, pure happiness. To get it, you have to find your inner self and you abide there. It is called Brahmanishtha. Brahmani Nishtha. Nishtha means Nitaram Sthitihi. That is called Nishtha. I was suggesting you get centered in your inner being. I was uh, suggesting in the meditation. So that is what is called Nishtha. And that inner being is the Brahman. The same Brahman is outside also, but unless you know yourself as the pure being, you will not know the outside world as the being. You will end up getting attached to the Namarupa, which are nothing but Vishaya. Therefore, um, that Brahmanishtha gives infinite happiness. It is a, the, the treasure of happiness just inside. You don't need to make an effort. Outside things you may have to make an effort. And that brings misery. Whereas here, no effort is involved. You just be in your Swarupa. You are in a communion with infinite happiness. That is Brahmanishthanam Anantam Sukham. You see, what happens, um, Generally, we are, we are generally unhappy. Normally, we are unhappy. Insufficient. It's lacking something. That is how the mind is. Because the mind is impure. That is how we are. And then uh, we come into contact with an object of desire. Some vishaya. When uh, you are in contact with it, the contact happens for a short while. You see the form that you like, or you hear the sound that you love, that you desire, or you get the food that you like, so whatever, or even some perfume, so you, you experience that the fragrance, which is very nice, and so at that time there is the contact. When the contact happens, the mind temporarily loses its sense of insufficiency. Mind is always something lacking. Mind is like that. That is the impure mind. The worldly person's mind. Did you ever see a worldly person? He cannot remain quiet. He has to do something or the other. Either he has to dial or call somebody or put something in the mouth and munch upon it. He has to do something or the other. He has to be doing like this, something he has to munch, something. Always contact with some object or the other. You know why? Because if he doesn't come into contact with anything, that means he is entirely left with himself. He feels lost. He feels very unhappy, uncomfortable. And then he holds on to something. Then the mind temporarily, temporarily feels relieved and becomes quiet. And uh, the mind doesn't feel uh, great, uh, but at least the sense of insufficiency is lost, is dropped. And uh, that becomes a nice experience. That sense of lack, lacking something that is gone. That means 
in a very small measure, your fullness now reflects. Earlier, the mind with its sense of insufficiency has covered up that fullness. Now, when the mind loses that sense of death, immediately the fullness reflects. And then you feel something great, some, something good. The person is walking. Walking means his mind is uh, so many thoughts. And these thoughts, so they are called discursive thoughts. They make you stressed out. They are not, they, may, they don't allow you to be comfortable. Thoughts are raging in the mind. Suddenly, some fragrance from a tree full of flowers, it came and hit his nose. And the fragrance was so pleasant, he stood in his tracks and for a few seconds the mind with its raging thoughts became quiet. And the inner fullness, which is always waiting there, it reflected like a flash. And he feels, oh, wonderful, very pleasant feeling it is. And he attributes that joy to the outward fragrance. The outward fragrance is only nimitta. It is called nimitta karanam, incidental cause. It is like uh, there is the soil and a seed is sitting inside, the dry, dried out seed. It is sitting there and then rain fell. The seed sprouted. Now you should not think that the sprout came from the rain water. The sprout doesn't come from the rain water. There is life in the seed. Life is this, life gives the sprout. Seed has life in it. You don't see it. It is very dried up. So you don't see the life in the seed, but it is there. And when the rainwater fell, that life inside the seed has come up. Similarly, when this fragrance hit the nose, the inner Ananda, the Brahma, Sachid Ananda, it came up. And he experiences joy. And he attributes that joy to this fragrance. There is no joy in fragrance. There is joy in you. There is no beauty in the rose. There is beauty in you. I'll tell a story and conclude. This is a well-known story. There was a dog. Don't misunderstand the, like a dog story. Some story, dog is also an animal, you know. So this dog has got a bone, a dry bone. You should understand, dog means an Indian street dog, not the dogs here. The dogs here are overfed and they are obese and they have heart and liver problems also. I am not talking about the dogs here. <laughs> Here we have a hospital for dogs, whereas in India, dogs do not have a hospital. They live their life. Even human beings do not have hospitals all the time. This dog got a dry bone. The Indian street dog is always in search of food, because there is not plentiful food available. So they have to find it. So it got a bone. This dog means bone. That is the combination. Dog is with bone. This silly dog, even if the bone is made of plastic, it will chew on it. That is the dog. I don't know why. <laughs> so it got hold of a dry bone. And then it is chewing upon the dry bone. The dry bone is very sharp edge. It has a broken dry bone. And therefore this sharp edge, it has cut its lip. And suddenly the dog tasted blood. And then the dog believes, oh my God, as I am chewing on this bone, the bone is giving blood to me. That is what it thinks. And with reinforced vigor, it chews the bone further. Because it is getting 
the taste of blood now and the poor dog believes that the bone gives the blood. Bone doesn't give any blood, it has nothing in it. In contact with the bone, its own blood is tasted by itself. And you believe me, the dog, it, it uh, chews the bone so much, eventually its lip is badly cut. And uh, it, is a, it is always a trade-off. The blood is coming and taste is coming, but this is paining. And But a point comes, when the pain becomes more and the taste becomes less, then it drops the bone and goes and sits in a corner and it has now cut lip. Lip is cut. Human beings are like that. They run after the pressures of the world and they think that the joy that they experience is coming from them. They do not know that the joy that they experience as they come into contact with the sense pressure, sense object, is entirely the inner joy. They don't know that. They attribute that the person thinks the joy came to him from food. He thinks that the joy came to him from, from dresses. From dresses people get joy? Will it, dress will give joy? Are, are buddhu hai kya? Dress, how dress will give joy? A diamond necklace will give joy? It is such a hard object and not even good for touch, it is a diamond thing. And so, and if you put it in the mouth, it will, you will vomit whatever food you have eaten. That blessed thing, the most useless thing on the face of the earth, that gives joy to you, you must be crazy in some fashion to think that it gives joy. These objects of the world, they don't have joy in them. They can never give joy to you. You are the infinite treasure of joy in yourself. That is, that's why you are the Brahman. Abide in that Brahman. Brahmanishtha. You will not know what is misery, what is sorrow. And uh, the body requires a few things. And the body gets those few things. You need not worry about that also. What about body it gets? The loss of nature will provide what it requires. So, just be absorbed in that Brahman, Atman, and partake of infinite happiness. Anantam Brahmanishthanam. You may say, Anantam Brahmanishthanam. Iti Vedanta Dindimaha. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Madha Chiyate Purna Sya Purna Madha Ya Purna Meva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhjorma Harihi Om Dhaksat Shri Krishna Panamastura